Hey everybody, I can see there's 27 of you um, logged in, so that's great. I'll just give it a couple more minutes or a minute. Hi, hi, hi. Everybody okay? Has everybody had a good week so far? Hey, VBO3. Good, excellent, that's nice to see. How am I doing? I'm doing fine, thank you. I've been working, maybe from two years ago, I'm getting A to level chemistry. Oh, I recognize that name, my unboxings and fun. Brilliant, so um, you're still um, subscribed, that's really good to see. Um, great, so what are you doing now, if, I, if you don't mind me asking? You got an A in chemistry? Final year of biomedical science. Oh my God, I feel really old now. Really, really old. <laughs> Excellent. Hi, everybody. There's lots of people saying hi, so that's fantastic. Okay, great. Yeah, so it's been a busy week for me. <laughs> Let's go, champ. Yeah, okay, all right, we better go. Um, busy week for me because I'm trying to... Oh, wow, we've got to do a uh, Masters at Imperial next year. I keep staring at this like this like an idiot. I should just use my phone, so sorry. Yeah, so this week I've been really busy trying to um, get the grips with the iPad so that when we get onto past exam questions, I can just mirror, the, stream the iPad. I think I'm there. I did a trial run with my, well, my daughter first this morning and then with my students and then um, I hopefully will be good to go maybe next week, um, hopefully. Uh, I've just got a new phone and I, I can't use, I can't work it. I can't find where this video is on my phone. Sorry, I'll just keep talking and uh, rambling on. No. Right, not to worry. I should do this before I actually um, switch on, shouldn't I? Right, okay, this is not good, so I am going to just crack on with my lesson. I'm just going to have to stare at the screen. Ah, right, are you the per can you do eight of us next week? Are you the person that's just messaged me? Um, because I've had, that was the first thing, KC. Uh, so you, you see everyone's just coming in now with their choices for next week. Com see, everyone's, everyone's coming in with a different thing now for next week. The um, the plan was that you were meant to, yes, good. The plan was, because this was in the description for this video, and don't hate me when I say this, um, you, were meant to put a dis you were meant to put a comment in the description for this video so that I could, dis I could see what people wanted to do. Two people, two people have done that. The person, sorry, your name's disappeared. The person that's um, just been messaging about isomers has just popped up and she's the only person that's actually uh, one of two people that's actually asked for something. So basically, next week, you're choosing, you're choosing the topic, okay? So you need to put some kind of message or comment on after this video and I'll look at all the different choices and decide which one most people want to do. So we've got two in so far. Somebody's asked for um, aldehydes and ketones. So I think they're on about oxidation of alcohols and isomers has also been uh, mentioned. So can I just clarify, seeing how that person's on now, the isomers person, are you talking about, I guess you're talking about cis-trans, EZ, structural maybe? Um, I can't imagine if you're in year 12, which I'm guessing you are, um, you're not talking about optical, I'm assuming. Okay. Right. Yeah. Every, every message now is coming up with a different topic. So it's going to be a nightmare to choose. Yes, you're in year 12. <laughs> okay, great. Right. So like I said, don't, don't be putting them in the chat now because I'm just getting spammed with loads of chat. It's literally just going up my screen. I can't read it from here, it's just a blur. So put your message in the comments, okay? 
Right, okay, so the other thing to mention before I start on spectroscopy is this Friday, remember we're doing two videos a week now, so the Wednesday one now is I'm teaching a topic, spectroscopy, and on Friday at three in the afternoon, hopefully you'll be free to make that, um, I'm going to look at some past paper questions on spectroscopy, so you can see the kind of stuff that you would get asked on this topic, okay? And obviously, um, I think I, if I haven't already put that out as a scheduled live stream, which you'll get notified of if you're a subscriber, um, then you'll see that. You'll see the link to the PDF for the exam questions so you can try them and then you can um, hopefully you've done them by three on Friday. And then when I go through the answers, you can see how you've done. Right. OK. Right, let's get started then. So, spectroscopy. So, all I'm going to look at this, after, oh, this evening, sorry, is mass spec and infrared spectroscopy. Okay? Oh, and before I start, I've got a little note here. Um, I need to do a shout out for two um, colleges or schools or colleges. I've got KGS Chem. So, hopefully, because the person who runs KGS Chem on Twitter got in touch with me this week and said, I think my students might be attending your lesson on Wednesday. So I said I would give them a shout out. And the other um, set of students I want to mention is, are, sorry, are from Sunderland College, which is my hometown, which is fantastic that they'll, they're joining us as well. I don't work there. I work in Hartlepool, but um, anyway, right. Okay, so let's start with my spec. So, Mass spec um, basically tells us two things about a molecule, organic molecule. So number one, it tells us the MR, and we, we know that from the molecular ion peak, okay? So I'm just putting MI peak to save a bit of time. Okay, so we know the MR from the molecular ion peak, and that's the peak furthest to the right. Now, there's a little bit of extra stuff I need to say there, okay, but furthest to the right is the molecular ion peak. It also tells us um, fragments that make up the molecule. So, obviously, I'll illustrate all this with some spectra on the on the board, but um, we can tell what the molecular ion peak, how heavy the molecule is, what its MR is, basically, and bits of the molecule, and we call them fragments. So that's the sort of jargon term for the fragments. And when I teach this in, in class, I always tell the students to think of, think of the molecule as like sort of Lego, bits of Lego joined together, okay? Um, so, and we, we can tell that from the other peaks, okay? So we've got, we've got a key peak, which is the one furthest to the right, and then all the other peaks, they're called fragment peaks, and they tell us bits of the molecule that kind of are able to break off, okay? Right, so a tiny, tiny bit about the theory behind how the process works. Okay, so organic molecules, I'm, I'm following my notes here, but I, I've just kind of summarised the notes on, on these things here. So or, organic molecules are um, bombarded, fired with electrons. Okay, so kind of electrons are shot at the uh, molecule, and that's from what we call an electron gun. That's actually what it's called, okay? From an electron gun. And what that does is, um, if, if, sort of, if my fist, if this fist is the molecule, the electrons come in, and, and the point of that is to knock an electron off the original molecule and give it a, give it a positive charge. Okay, 
So organic molecules are bombarded with electrons from an electron gun um, and this knocks out um, one electron. Now sometimes, I'll talk about this in a second, sometimes two electrons might be knocked out um, but the questions that have been asked over the last few years haven't dealt with more than one electron being knocked out. So we'll just keep it, you know, as per what the specification says, um, one electron's knocked out, okay? And that's going to generate a one plus ion. Okay? So if something loses an electron, it becomes positive, one plus, yep. Okay, and obviously that's a, 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 fancy, a fancy term for that is a carbocation. Okay, you'll see why I'm mentioning that because one of the questions that I'll be covering on Friday uses, uses that term. Okay, all right, so basically just to summarise then, so if we think of our organic molecule as, as, as formula X, okay, so electrons are fired at X um, and one electron is knocked out, so it becomes X plus. And there's that electron that's been knocked out okay now if you think about it because the molecules lost an electron it's now got an unpaired electron so technically it's also a radical okay now that's gone off it would i mean i've been teaching a long time now and that used to be tested many years ago that's gone off the syllabus now and i've checked OCR and AQA. It's not on anymore, so I'm just going to lose that radical dot, okay? So that's basically the process that's taken place, okay? Um, and so I'm running out of space here. The, what the mass spectrometer does is it measures the what's called the mass to charge ratio, okay? So we'll just put that, squeeze that in the bottom here. The mass to charge ratio is measured by the mass spectrometer so m over z is the label for the x-axis um, but because z that's the charge because the charge is just one then whatever you get for m divided by z because that's one obviously m is the mass of the thing that it's 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 detected okay so m over z m is the mass of this the thing Z is the charge of the thing, the charge is one plus, so M over Z is still just the mass of the, of the species, okay? So basically, this is telling us the mass of the particle that it's measured, okay? Um, suppose, I mean, if, if two electrons were knocked out, you'd be dividing by, this could be a suggest question, I suppose, it's not on the syllabus anymore, but they could say, suggest what what would what would be the case if two electrons were knocked out of the species um so if two electrons were knocked out you divide them by two so then everything would half so all of the peaks would would sort of half in um in value okay um so but like i said a few minutes ago that's not been tested for ages so maybe they will i don't know i'm not an examiner so i don't know so that's basically how the process works. Right, so let's just rub that off and we'll see if I can get away with leaving that on. Come up with some simple spectra then, or a simple spectrum. Okay, so um, let's suppose we had, I'll put that down there, um, ethanol. Okay, so CH3, CH2OH, okay? So if you put that in the mass spectrometer, what you would see, what would happen is your CH3, CH2OH gets fired with electrons, one electron gets knocked out, and it becomes CH3, CH2OH plus plus charge because that's 
that's the most common loss of marks that I see. Um, and there's the electron that's been knocked out. Okay. You can put that in a square bracket if you want. So obviously ions are often put in square brackets. You don't have to, but anyway, they're on the board now, so I'll leave it on. Okay. So what would, this is the beginnings of the mass spectrum. So this is the mass to charge ratio axis. Um, what's the MR of two carbons, um, six hydrogens and an oxygen? It's 46. And so that, that's what you would see. If there was only one peak in the mass spectrum, you would see a peak of 46, okay? The furthest to the right. So that's the molecular ion peak, okay? So what I tell my students to do, as soon as they see a mass spectrum, what you need to do is look at the peak furthest to the right. It's the first thing you should look at. What's the peak furthest to the right? Okay. Now, I just want to make a little point here. Sometimes you might see a tiny, I don't know if you can see that from, um, from your, whatever you're watching on, but sometimes you might see a tiny, tiny, tiny peak. That's at 47. Okay. So what we sometimes call that, or what well, that is referred to, is the M plus one peak. Okay, so it's the original molecule, but it's gained one, a mass of, an extra one in mass. And that's due to the presence of carbon-13. So it might be that one of the ethanol molecules that, you, that you're sampling has got a carbon-13 isotope in it, and that's lifted the mass just by one unit. And so you might see a, a, a tiny peak at 47, okay? So technically, when I'm saying the peak furthest to the right, that's technically the furthest to the right peak, the 47, um, but 46, the, the, the sort of bigger one to the right, is the molecular ion peak okay right um so that's kind of all i wanted to say on that little bit i'm just gonna see there's loads of stuff going up in the chat and i can't really see from i'm just gonna get out of the shot so i don't look like what people are saying so i can i can see no chat now it's typical isn't it i'll move out of the camera and nobody says anything was that okay? I'll just ask it, was that okay kind of question and wait for somebody to go yes. Is there always an M plus one peak? Um, <laughs> not always. What, what sometimes happens? Good, 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 good. Excellent, right, thanks. Um, someone's asked, is there always an M plus one peak? No, it's not always shown, but sometimes um, right, M, someone's asking about M plus 2. I'm going to need to look. M plus 2, I think, I'm, I'm really racking my brains here. I think that's to do with halogen. If there's halogens, halogenoalkanes, so you've got chlorine, chlor, I think it's chloroalkanes, where you've got chlorine 35 and chlorine 37, so you've got difference of two. I think that rings a bell, but that's year, it's years and years and years ago since I've ever, ever had to deal with anything like that. And I was looking at the spec today um, before I sort of wrote these notes, um, and it said specifically that M plus 2 will not be tested. Okay, so um, getting quickly back to this, M plus 1 peaks aren't always shown, but if they are, they'll probably ask you what, what's it caused by. There'll be a question that that's why they're asking it. That, that, that's why they've shown it. Okay, cool. All right, and so I'm going to turn over. So we'll go into fragmentation now. <laughs> Excellent, right. Great. We'll go into fragmentation now. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave that on the, on the board because that's, um, we can just add to this now. Because obviously the mass spectrum, there's more lines than just one peak or two peaks. Okay, so if I draw ethanol up, we'll just stick with ethanol.
So that there, obviously with a positive charge, um, ooh, let's just do that. That has caused that peak there, okay? Um, what can happen is, remember, this is being fired with electro electrons, are absolutely, you know, bombarding this, firing into that. That's obviously high energy. What that can do is it can actually break a bond. And so therefore, let's just imagine, okay, let's just pick out the pair of electrons in that carbon-carbon bond there. So let's imagine that this bond got broken, okay? So let's just break it down like that, okay? So the electron beam has caused that bond to break. So what's that gonna do? It's gonna kind of snap, snap the molecule, or fragment it is the proper way of describing it. And this is, this is what could happen. So look, we've got, look at this bit, this left-hand bit. This is a CH3 methyl group. Let's give that, that electron there. So this is a radical, okay? Let's make this bit here the ion, because we've got to, we've got to maintain that charge, otherwise this, this equation doesn't balance. Remember, equations have to balance for charge and mass. So if we create this, CH2, CH2, OH, but it's got to be an ion to maintain charge, the mass spectrometer can see that, okay? So mass spectrometers can only detect positively charged particles, okay? So if that was what was, if that's what happened, then this would be seen by the spectrometer. Okay, so what is the mass of that thing there? So that's um, carbon, 12, 13, 14, 15, plus another 16, that's 31. So if we come down here and just put a line at 31, that's due to this fragment, CH2OH plus, okay? Um, I'm just going to label this up. So the molecular ion peak is obviously um, CH3, CH2, OH plus. Okay, because sometimes you get asked to um, write the formula of the species causing the peak. So obviously you've got to write the formula of the thing and don't forget the plus charge. Now, fragmentation is a really complex process and it's, comp it's I don't want to say dumbed down for A-level, but it's massively, over, it's massively simplified for A-level, okay? So, basically, the positive charge could either be carried by this particle here, so the way I've drawn it, it could do that. It could do it the other way, okay? So, or, we'll just say or, we could get the methyl radical, carries the positive charge, okay? And that would mean that this would be a radical, CH2OH radical, okay? Now, if that was the case, that's what the spectrometer would see. So therefore, you also, and it's really common in organic um, mass spec, you also would see a fragment at uh, 15, 12 plus three. So, and that's due to CH3 plus, okay? Now, A-level's not gonna ask you which one is more likely to form, okay? Both are possible. Now, and again, this is not tested at A-level, but the height of the peak is a measure of how stable the ion is. So the more likely an ion is to form, hope this is making sense, the more likely an ion can form and, and carry that positive charge, then the, the more of those particles would exist um, and then the peak would be taller, okay? So let's just say this one's more likely and so therefore you get a taller peak, okay? Um, if you, there's one thing I suppose you could liken it to is, you know, when you do the um, stability of carbocations that form in electrophilic addition, so when you've got your alkene mechanisms and Malkonikov's rule, so it's kind of linked to that. Some positive ions are able to um, spread the charge out better than others. And 
it's kind of what's going on here okay but basically I would just I've got, I've got written here top tip from me always start with your molecular ion so this thing here always start there and then just break a bond okay so I suppose another thing if I change colored pen here so if I go to red let's break this this one here okay this bond um, so I'm going to rub all this out. So what could happen now is you could get um, CH3, CH2. Um, and let's make that the radical. So we're not going to see that if that's the one that forms. Um, and let's make the OH bit the, the, the um, ion. So you'd see that 16 plus 1, 17. So you're going to see, and depending on how stable that is, it's going to determine the height of it. So let's say it's not that, uh, not not massively stable. I'm going to peak at 17, okay? And then let's do the, the converse of that. Let's give that the positive charge, CH3, CH2, plus OH, plus, uh, sorry, that's a radical, isn't it? Okay. So we're going to see that one now. So what's that got a mass of? 12, uh, 24, and 5, 29. Let's say that's quite stable. So it's quite tall. 29. So that was OH plus. And let's say that's C2H5 plus. Okay. So all I wanted, all I wanted to make a point there is fragmentation can just chop the molecule up as and when okay you always get a positively charged and a radical okay so that's kind of a that's a that's another sort of key part of this uh right i'm just going to look at the chat now so uh, again i could see loads of things firing away while i was in mid flow there no you don't have to put Rebecca. hi rebecca sorry uh, no, you don't have to put brackets around the ions. How many of them are there? Um, well, if you if you do a Google search on the mass spectrum of ethanol, you will see loads of there's loads and loads of peaks um, that you could put. I mean, it's feasible for that one. Um, you could chop it there. You could chop it there, and I suppose you could just lose a hydrogen and chop it there, um, but. Check them out on, on, can any molecule fragment, yep. What's the height relevance? I think that's what you're asking, Alex. The height relevance is down to the stability of the positive ion, okay? But that's not gonna be, that's not tested by the A-level exam boards, okay? The height of the peaks is not tested. I've just, brought it into this lesson in case anybody was uh, people normally want to know what the height's down to okay no worries great so shall we move on the why aren't radicals charged if i had to charge on that um the equation wouldn't balance because it starts off as one plus there um if I put a charge on both of them, then you'd have one plus and two plus. It doesn't doesn't work. Um, is my very off the top of my head answer to that one. Okay, I don't know who's asking me the questions now. So all right, great. Right, so we're nearly finished with mass spec. I'm just checking the time. Um, I'm just going to talk a bit more about how fragment peaks are useful. Um, so, fragment peaks. Are useful. Uh, the first reason, this is the longer reason, um, they help us distinguish between structural isomers. I'll just put 
and then distinguish between structural isomers. So the examples I've got for this for this little exercise are um, propan one all versus propan two all. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly draw there. It's much easier to visualise this if you do displayed formula. So if you just bear with me. Bond. Just getting back to that question about the radical, you know, when we when we do um, halogenation of alkanes, the chlorine radical that's formed off, you know, when you go CL, CL, break that bond by homolytic fission, you get two chlorine radicals. There's no charge, there's no charge on that. Because that essentially is just the chlorine atom with no overall charge. It's got the same number of electrons as protons. I don't know if that helps, by the way, but I don't like leaving questions unanswered. Um, right, okay. So, proton 1 all versus proton 2 all. Okay, so obviously, if you put them in a mass spectrometer, let's do the 2. So, M over Z, M over Z, okay. They've both got the same MR, because they're structural isomers. So they're both going to show a molecular ion peak at 60. Okay, so MIP, um, that's at 60, MIP. So that's not going to help us distinguish which one's proton 1-ol one one and which one's proton 2-ol. Okay, however, if we think about how these things can fragment then we can use the pattern in the mass spectrum to work out which one it is, okay? So hopefully, I'm gonna try and use different colors here and break ones, right? So let's suppose we break this bond here. So if that, if that carried the positive charge, then we'd see a peak at 15, okay? So that's due to um, CH3 plus. I won't bother with the brackets now because I, I just to save time. Okay. Um, and then obviously if that bit carried the charge, then it's going to have the difference between 15 uh, from 60, what's that, 45. Um, so we'd see a peak of 45. 45. So that's CH2, CH2OH. Okay. Right, um, let's break that bond. So if that carried the positive charge, 15, so we've got, a, we've got fragment peaks at 15 on both of them. And we've got, what have we got? Um, CHOH, CH3, okay? which is essentially going to have the same masses or mass of charge as CH2, CH2OH. It's going to have the same MR. So we're also, that's also going to show a peak at 45. Okay. So CHOH, CH3 plus. So we, we, we're no further forward just yet. Okay. So the, the, all, both of those can show all of those fragments. Okay. Let's change to a different colour. Let's break this bond. Okay. So what are we going to see? If that carried the positive charge, CH3, CH2 plus, so that's 29. Uh, let's try and 29. Let's make that quite tall. Let's say that's really stable. 29. Uh, so what's that? CH3, CH2 plus. Okay. Um, the rest of the molecule, if that carry the positive charge, CH2OH, so that's a 31, 31, CH2OH plus, okay? Right, let's have a look at this molecule. Can we fragment that? Can we break a covalent bond 
and generate a fragment with an M over Z value of 29? And the answer is no, we can't. Okay, so these this would not show a peak at 29 and it would not show a peak at 31. You can't do it. So fragmentation can help you distinguish between structural isomers. So they've got the same molecular ion peak because they've essentially got the same MR because they've got the same number of atoms, they just arrange differently. But the way they fragment is different and so you get different patterns. Okay, so that's the first um, usefulness of fragment peaks. And then the final, the other thing to say is each, um, each organic molecule has a unique fragmentation pattern. Okay, so it's like a fingerprint. So these mass spectrometers are all linked to spectral databases, big massive computers with huge library of um, molecules that they've already um, analysed and it's just stored in the library, like a DNA database kind of thing. And all it does is it just goes and looks for the, the match. And if it can find a match, it will go, yep, that's this particular molecule because it's got the same fragmentation pattern as the one that we're looking at right now, okay? So the second thing, I'll just write that up. Number two is um, fragmentation, fragmentation patterns are unique to the molecule. Okay, therefore they are linked uh, to a database. Okay. Right, that, in my notes, that's the end of math spec. So, I will, if we've got any questions in the chat before I move on to um, infrared. Thank you, with three exclamation marks, Amy, that's, uh, that's very kind, thank you very much. I'll give you thank you with four back. <laughs> Just out of interest, um, is there anybody, is there anybody in the room right now who's never been to, who just hasn't because of lockdown hasn't done math spec yet? And because I know I know of one particular college where the students haven't been taught this yet, um, and so they're either having to teach themselves it from a textbook or videos or going on to YouTube and you, right, Zara, you, well, I've taught you it. Hopefully it made sense. Um, but hope, you know, you taught it yourself. So hopefully, you know, we haven't finished the content yet. Okay. Well, hopefully, you know, you'll go to a textbook after this lesson. Did it before lockdown. I didn't understand it when I did. Kyle, okay, do you... Do you understand it now? That's, we rushed it a bit. Do, I think it makes sense. Yeah, I'm gonna start A2 with my students probably after half, what would have been half term, so. Okay, great. Excellent. <laughs> right, cheers, you crazy. <laughs> you didn't do it with Jessica, right, okay, fair enough. Well, as long as it makes sense now, hopefully. Or it starts to make sense. I was, you know, it might be that I've gone really quickly through that. I've, what's it? I've been going 38 minutes and I've taught what I would probably take a couple of lessons over. Um, so it's it's obviously, it's going to be hard. But if you go go to the notebooks, go to the textbooks after this. Um, great. Okay. Right. Infrared. It was nice to see um, when I switched the mach when I switched the machine the iPad off last week. I had three new three new subscribers last week. Hint hint. Um, that would be good if uh, I got any more of this. 
Okay, infrared. Infrared. Infrared spectroscopy. Okay. Right, okay, so we've got a little bit of background here, and I'll bear in mind some people have probably never done this before. What is the topic for next week? It's up to you. It's up to you. You've got to put a comment in the in the um, comment section under this video and tell me what you want to do. I've had two so far done the done the official way that I asked for. Right, okay. So let's let's go for uh, a couple of molecules. Let's go for a very simple hydrocarbon. Let's go for methane, and then let's go for um, ethanol. Trusty ethanol. Such a useful molecule. Okay. Right. So obviously. We're not at up, never at absolute zero, so everything's in motion, slight, you know, depending on the temperature that we're at. Basically, where I'm going with this is, all of these bonds are in constant motion, okay? Each bond's got its own natural frequency. So, the way infrared works is, if you apply energy to a molecule in the form of infrared, just a form of energy. If you can match the energy, the natural um, frequency of a bond, then that bond will absorb that energy and it, it'll actually start to vibrate more. Okay, so I'll just bring that back. Covalent bonds, this is what I've got in my notes, covalent bonds are in constant motion um, at their natural frequency, okay? So we'll just say um, covalent bonds vibrate at their natural frequency. Hopefully you can make sense of my uh, abbreviations there. Covalent bonds vibrate at their natural frequency. Um, these bonds can absorb infrared if the frequency that's applied equals that natural frequency, okay? So you can see in methane, you've only got one type of bond, you've got the CH bond. So the, that will only really absorb one type of, um, one frequency of infrared. So that would give you a very, very simple spectrum, okay? I'll come back to that in a second. In, um, something like ethanol, you've got CH bonds, you've got a CC bond, you've got a C single O bond, and you've got an OH bond. So you've got one, two, three, four types of bond. So each of those bonds will be able to absorb slightly different frequency of infrared. Okay. Um, now, these vibrations, I'll come back, I said I would come back to methane. So the vibrations, I'm going to look silly here, but the vibrations can be, if I stand at the board there, they can sort of be like that, okay? But they can also be like that. They can be, the vibrations can be like that. The vibrations can be like that, and so on. So it's actually, like in mass spec, it's, this is massively over, this is massively simplified for A-level, okay? So... When you get the, when I did my chemistry degree, you had to know about all the different types of vibrations. So there was um, symmetric vibrations where they're going backwards and forwards at the same time. There was asymmetric vibrations where they're doing that, you make a, a exercise routine out of this. There was there was that, there was that, there was that, there was that, and all and all of those um, absorb different amounts of infrared. Okay. Right, so I'll leave, I'll leave that there. So um, what infrared enables you to do is identify what kind of covalent bonds you've got in your molecule, okay? And obviously in organic chemistry, certain covalent bonds are associated with functional groups. So infrared enables you to see what kind of functional groups you've got in your molecule, okay? 
Um, right, so let's just put some kind of flesh onto this. Covalent bonds vibrate at a natural frequency. Um, bonds can absorb infrared if the frequency is equal to the natural frequency. Um, and that makes the bonds vibrate more. Now, I wasn't going to do this, but I am going to do it. Um, the analogy I use is <laughs> dancing, okay? So if, I, if I'm out with my wife, which um, isn't very often nowadays, but if we go out and a, and a song comes on um, that she likes, so she kind of absorbs that music. Hope you kind of hope this makes sense. And she, you can see, she starts to move around and she's dragging me onto the dance floor. And I'm like, oh, I don't want to go on. I don't want to go on. So she, she likes a particular song. She likes a certain frequency of of music, but I don't. Okay. And then let's imagine two songs later, something comes on that I really like. So I'm moving around and wanting to go on the dance floor. She doesn't want to go on. You see, that's the analogy I would use with my students in class. And they would probably cringe and go, oh, James, yeah, just shut up. OK, so anyway, that's that's kind of where I would how I would explain that one. OK, right. So infrared um, enables us to um, identify covalent bonds present and therefore most importantly functional groups okay so let me rub this off So a very simple diagram to try and illustrate that. So let's imagine this is your sample. Um, this is a detector. Now don't worry, you wouldn't have to draw, you wouldn't have to draw anything like this, but hopefully it'll help you understand the process. Uh, sample detector. So let's imagine infrared is being supplied at three different frequencies. So X, Y, and Z. And the, the unit we use is centimeters to the minus one. That's how it's measured in. So that's the number of waves per centimeter. CM minus one, CM minus one. Right, okay. So let's imagine that's um, the the bonds in the sample aren't they don't absorb none of the bonds have that frequency um, and so that just passes straight through ooh, straight through and it hits the detector 100 percent hits the detector transmittance it's called transmittance so all of that frequency gets to the detector Okay, let's imagine there's a bond in the molecule that likes, I shouldn't really use that term likes, that has the natural frequency of Y centimetres minus one. So what's it going to do? The bonds are going to absorb that frequency and so not much of that will actually get to the detector because the molecules absorbed it and made the bonds vibrate. So let's say only 5% hits the detector. OK, and let's say there's nothing in the molecule that um, has a natural frequency of Z. And so all of that gets to the detector or let's say 95 percent gets the detector. OK, so let's translate that. Well, what would that spectrum look like? 
Um, and let's make this the transmittance axis. This is percent. Okay, so let's have x, y, and z. So let's say this is frequency x, this is frequency y, this is frequency z. So 100% of um, x was, was hit the detector, so the, the line would, would just continue along there. But when we get to y, only 5% hit the detector. So what we'd see is a big drop, so let's say that's a 5 there, that's 100. We'd see a big drop because the molecules absorb that energy. Okay, so the, the, the graph or the, the spectrum drops down. And then when we get to Z, let's say it absorbs a little bit of it. So 5, what was it, 5%? So we'll go down a tiny bit and we get that. Okay, so let's say that's 95. So what we can see from that is if we had a table of bonds, okay, um, CM minus 1, so X, Y, and Z, whatever these values represent. Let's say that was a CH bond. Let's say that was a CO bond. Let's say that was a CCL bond. You could say that, oh, this molecule must have a C single bond O in it because it's absorbed that energy that C single bond O's um, absorb. And so you can see from where the absorption is what kind of bonds you've got, okay? Um, obviously, all of this information, you don't have to remember anything. You just have to apply it from the data sheet, okay? Now, in reality, the infrared spectrum starts, the, the maximum energy is 4,000 centimetres to minus one. That's the range applied, and it goes down to about 500 okay so that's typically the the wave number range so i'm just going to pause there and ask a couple ask if anyone's got any questions on that and then we'll start looking at some typical spectra and then we're finished okay so i'm just hiding away from the camera so i don't look like a fool wow still 55 people um ooh, 30 likes i think this has been the best one yet I'll come on to the fingerprint thing. Um, if the transmittance was 50%, would that be indicative of a bond? I would say so, yes, okay? Because sometimes the key absorptions would only come down about here. So yeah, you would, you would, um, you would have to apply that as a bond. I think, Okay, right, I think the questions now are probably, I might probably end up answering these questions with some spectra, okay? Um, right, I'm coming on to all of that. What causes broad peaks? I'm coming on to all of that, right, okay. Um, it's basically, because, very quickly, a broad peaks cause because the um, bond has a, has, a, has a range of frequency that it vibrates over. Some bonds vibrate, in a set frequency, some kind of have a bit of a range, okay? Um, but again, remember this is really simplified down to, I think, I know when I taught this to my students, some of them were really overthinking this, massively overthinking it and thinking they had to, they had to talk about every single tiny little peak and absorption on the, on the spectrum. There's only certain peaks that you know, or absorptions you should call them, that you need to worry about. Right, okay. So let's start looking at some spectra. Right. So we're going to look at three, we're going to look at three um, typical infrared spectra. So if you're in year 12, which I'm assuming most of you are, okay, 
most of the molecules that will be tested in year 12 are molecules containing carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. Okay. Now the OCRs, halogenoalkanes in year 12. Okay. So the only, and you, you're not taught about um, sort of nitrogen compounds on OCR, that's what our teacher remember, until you're in year 13. So they're not going to ask you about um, amines or amino acids and things like that because it hasn't been taught. So you're literally just limited to a small number of functional groups, okay? So things like um, alcohols, carboxylic acids, um, ketones, aldehydes, um, you could have an alkene, they might throw an alkene in there, can you spot the CC double bond and things like that, okay? They might, they might be sort of sneaky and put a halogenoalkane in and say, um, suggest what this could be. But they'd, they'd have to make the spectrum so obvious that it's that and not something else. Okay, right, I'm, I'm rambling on now. So, typical spectra. So we'll start with the alcohols. And the thing I've written here to stress to people is, top tip from me, do not try and analyse every single absorption, okay? There's literally two, maximum three um, absorptions that you would need to pick out if you were talking about an infrared spectrum. L literally, that's all you would have to pick out, okay? Right, so I'm just going to focus on the key ones that you look for, okay? And I know somebody mentioned the fingerprint region, so we'll talk about that in a second. Right, so... Alcohols first. I'm hoping you can see that okay. I just, I'll, I'll sort of point things out or I'll write it on the board. So we've got, remember, the maximum is 4,000 and the minimum is 500 centimetres to the minus one. I have got that on there, but you can't probably see it from there. Okay. So there's basically two key absorptions for an alcohol, okay? Two key absorptions. One of them is the most important one, and that's that one there, okay? So that's starting at about 3,200, and it's going to about 3,600, okay? So 3,200 to 3,600, CM to the minus one, that's due to the OH bond. Due to OH bond of an alcohol. And I always tell my students, don't just say OH, say OH of an alcohol, okay? Because there's another type of OH bond that you could be tested about. And if you don't specify what you're dealing with, then you could lose a mark, okay? So that bond there, that absorption there, this one here, I don't want to write on that, but okay? So look at the pro look at the shape of it. It's it's quite quite broad, it's not massively broad. You'll see how broad they can get when we look at the next the next spectrum. So it's fairly broad, but the, the sort of shape profile I would class that as having is it's quite smooth and it's it's kind of curved and it's wide-ish. Obviously, you can't say wide-ish in an exam, but you get my point, okay? It's not spiky. So if I just draw under there, a sort of another kind of thing you could see, you could see something like that, or you could see something like this, okay? So if you got something like that in the same range as that, that's not an OH, okay? And if, you, if you're going to do these questions for Friday, you will see exactly what I mean by that, because I've deliberately chosen questions that are picking up on these things, okay? Right, so that's the first thing to note. 
The second thing is in an alcohol, you've also got a C single bond door, all right? Now, the trouble with the C single bond door is it occurs around about, now I've got this written down, obviously you don't have to remember these values, 1,000 to 1,300 centimetres to minus one, okay? C single bond door. Now that's in what we call, as some people have already asked me about, the fingerprint region. So the fingerprint region is basically um, 1,500 centimetres to minus one and below. Okay, that's the fingerprint region. And it tends to be quite messy, all right? And it's very, very difficult to try and pick anything out in the fingerprint region because you've got loads and loads of absorptions very close together and it's difficult to sort of single one thing out from another, okay? So all I'm gonna say is, I've kind of, I'm, let's go for that one there. So something in there is the C single bundle, okay? So that was uh, 1,000 to 1,300 cm to the minus one. Okay, so let's go for that one there. Could be that one, it could be that one. Okay, you wouldn't be expected to say exactly which one it is. Okay, as long as you're within the range on the data sheet, that's absolutely fine. Okay, um, so fingerprint region, And I was going to say this at the end, but may as well say it now. That is also unique to the molecule. So if, it, if you've got a database linked to your spectrometer, it'll just look for the match and find, and find what the molecule is from the fingerprint region. So it will just analyse that, and that's unique to that molecule. Okay. The only other thing really to point out in this one is, well, what's this due to here, this peak here? Um, so that's a... 3,000 roughly, it's quite, it's quite sharp. Um, this one I've drawn is quite long, it's quite, um, it's quite a strong absorption. They don't, they don't always, they're not always strong like that. Um, that's due to CH, okay? So all organic molecules contain CH, therefore, all show absorptions around 3000 cm minus one. Okay, so again, obviously, I've been doing this for years, so I've seen it all. Imagine if I just cover that up, so just imagine that that wasn't there, but you had this peak at 3000. Some students I've taught in the past have gone, oh, I've got an absorption at 3,000, I've got an OH, okay? Well, it's not an OH because it's the wrong shape. It's not, it's not curved, it's not wide-ish. That's the OH, that's the CH, okay? Um, so that's your alcohols. What I would suggest you do, and I did, I did this when I was drawing these out, I just went on to Google Images and I just searched infrared spectra alcohols and hundreds came up and they all had that. All of them have got that in them, okay? So you could, that's a little bit of revision you could do, you know, if you wanted to, to see more spectra, just to get more confident with them, okay? And remember the A-level spectra, the ones that are put into exam papers are simplified from the real ones okay so just bear that in mind right um right i'm going to get rid of that so that's the alcohol remember I need to speed this up a little bit because i'm conscious that we're over the eight o'clock mark can't believe there's still 50 people joining that's great right okay so alcohols we'll push them up there so the next one we'll look at is the carboxylic acids. So I'll put them directly on top of each other. Hopefully you can see. The comparison, OK? So this is a carboxylic acid now, so that's an alcohol. 
This is a carboxylic acid. So just think about the functional group in a carboxylic acid. Okay, and obviously an alcohol's got that, hasn't it? Okay. Right, so in a carboxylic acid, you've got, I would say, two definite key peaks, three, one's not as important, two you must assign, third one you could assign if you wanted to. Okay, so again, first place I would look at, you know in the mass spectra when I said always look to the right, look at the very end of the spectrum. If you do an infrared, look at 3000 and above first, look at that first. If you've got something like that or something like that, you've got an OH of some description. Right, look at the different shape. So it's, it's finishing roughly at the same point, maybe a little bit lower, but it's much, it's much broader. Okay, so this is actually classed on the OCR data sheet as a broad absorption. Okay, so this here is broad and it's the it's due to this bond here so it's the OH of carboxylic acid always say what kind of OH it is is it the OH of an alcohol or is it the OH of a carboxylic acid okay and the range for that on the OCR data sheet is two and a half thousand to three thousand three hundred okay two and a half to three thousand three hundred rub that out okay right we'll just deal with this little thing here you can see a little absorption there just under 3000 that's due to your CH so that's your OH and then that little part extra part of the of the same absorption is due to the CH you wouldn't get any marks for that because everything's got CHs in it Right, what else have we got in a carboxylic acid? We've also got a C double bond O, all right? That's it there. Okay, so I always remember 1700, okay? The, the actual range off the data sheet is, where is it? 1630 to 1820, okay? I always just remember around about 1700 okay so it's around about 1700 cm the minus one the c double bondo absorption isn't broad it's quite narrow and it's very strong it almost touches the bottom of the um of the the x-axis okay so it's a strong absorption so if you've got basically if you look at a spectrum and you see broad absorption at around 3000 and a strong absorption at 1700 roughly you're talking you're looking at a carboxylic acid okay it's as plain as that and then the only other thing obviously you you can see you've also got a c single bond oh well remember we said it's somewhere in the fingerprint region that messy part of the spectrum below 1500 so something in there is going to be a C single bond O, okay? But take it from me, mm -hmm. what, the, what they're looking for is can you spot that one, can you spot that one, okay? So that's your carboxylic acid. And then the final one that we're going to look at is a carbonyl. Okay, so I'll get that. So carbonyl. So it could be something like um, ethanol, or it could be propanone, something like that. That'll do. Kind of lined up. So 
carboxylic acid. And this is an aldehyde, uh, sorry, red carbonyl. So in other words, aldehyde or ketone. So typically, if it was an aldehyde, you'd have C, double bond O with an H on. If it was a ketone, you'd have a carbon with this double bonded O with carbons either side. Okay? So both of them have got this key bond, C double bond O. Well, didn't we have one of those in the carboxylic acid? Where did it appear? 1700. 1700. So that is obviously your C double bond O. They will be due to CHs. Okay? Um, Yeah, so I mean, I'm on my final page of the notes here, so I'll, I'll, I'm going to stop in a second. Um, typical, I've just written down here, typical exam questions for AS chemistry, first year chemistry. Um, organic compound, the tensor, an organic compound has, um, contains C, H and O, blah, blah, blah. So my top tip would be look at 3,000-ish, look at 1,700. If there's anything else that you can pick out, do it, but don't try and pick out every single absorption. You're wasting your time. Honestly, you're wasting your time. Um, and I've just said, if it mentions an alkene, look out for a C double bond C, okay? But they will make that fairly obvious. If it does mention that it's a haloalkane, then you could um, start looking for a carbon halogen bond. I think earlier I said that the wooden test on infrared, the wooden test for carbon halogens, that, that's a slight mistake. The wood test for the wooden test for it on mass spec. That's what I meant to say, which I've already said. And obviously, once you get into year 13, you'd study more functional groups. And so the spectra start getting a little bit more complicated because there's obviously more stuff they could ask you for. Right. That's the end of what I wanted to say. Um, that's been what's that six seventy minutes like that right I can see same same lol same oh thank you somebody said thank you thank you sir thank you you're very welcome pretty crazy Why is the absorption of an OH alcohol different to no, just because the natural frequency of those bonds are going to be different? <laughs> Legend, I bet. I wish, yeah. Thanks, anyway. Uh, yep, it's a really nice. I'm seeing the same names popping up. Saving your A level, great. Well, I'm sorry. This, I'm sorry that you feel like that, but that's. <laughs> ah. Right. Yes, I do know Ruth from Greenhead College. I met her a couple of years ago because I used to work with Mo, who was your vice principal. So I don't know if you're in contact with Mo. You, your name's disappeared now. But if you're in contact with Mo, say that you have just watched one of my lessons because I know Mo very, very well. <laughs> Alex, my teacher set your videos as my lessons. You'll be sick of me, I bet. Where can you get the questions on this? Um, I'm going to post, I don't know if I've done it yet. Oh, there's millions of messages, sorry. Um, the questions are going to, I'm going to post them um, tomorrow morning, okay? I've set three questions for Friday. If you wanted to have a go at those, we're going to go through the answers on Friday. Um, so if you, yeah, physics and maths tutor as well, that's a good place to look as well. I've posted it, have I? Cheers. So you must be um, subscribed and you know that I've posted it. <laughs> You've printed them already? Wow. Get you. That's great. I am got a printer. Um, am I going through? 
AS only on the live streams. Uh, my focus, I'm afraid, is the first year chemists because year 13 is um, obviously your exams are being cancelled. Uh, what's yeah, it's a tricky one that because I know some year 13s are going to want to do, yeah, NMR. Someone's asking for NMR to year 13 topic. Um, yeah, lol in it. I think that's, uh, yeah, I think I know what that means. Okay. When are the live streams? <laughs> the live streams are Wednesday. When, Wednesday at 7. And Friday at three. That's what I'm gonna do. Currently teaching myself KP. Yeah. Cool. Now, while there's still forty-four people on, now I remember last week somebody asked me to go through something, and I said, "Have you not watched my video on that?" Because I've made I have made over six hundred videos where I'm teaching um, all of the topics on A level, all of them. So if you go to my, I don't know if you're on Twitter, but if you go to Twitter, my pinned tweet is my index doc, okay? So it's a Google doc and it's got every single video that I've made in a table under each um, topic. So if you're wanting to study NMR, go to the NMR part of the doc and click on the links, they're all there, and you just click and watch the video and hopefully that'll help you. Um, because I've only just started doing live streams, so, you know, people have used my stuff for years now, and I always get nice messages back in August after results day saying, um, I've got a really good grade, and I think you might have helped, kind of thing, so I don't want to, I don't want to brag at all, so, yeah. You have that document. <laughs> You're the isomers person, aren't you? Maybe we should do isomers next week for you. Right, I have not had any, um, well, in Sunderland we would say I, would, I haven't had my tea yet, which is my evening meal. Good, I'm pleased you like it. I'm pleased you like it. Good, that's what I like to see. Yep, that's great. Great, so hopefully see you all on Friday, three o'clock, and, <laughs> yeah, excellent. Um, the document is class. Cheers for that. Yeah, good. Okay, yeah, see, so yeah, I'm rambling on now. Right, yeah, the numbers are going down now. There's only 41. Right, I'm going. Bye, bye. Have a nice few days. I'll see you on, fr on Friday. We say tea and Donny. Is that Doncaster? <laughs> yeah, you too. Keep safe. Yeah, you're welcome. No worries. Bye, 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 bye. Yes, excellent. I know somebody from Doncaster. Anyway. Right, bye. <laughs> you hang up. No, you 